Hi there, I'm Jason, I'm here with Steve, Clay and Sean. This is the Front Row MMA TV show, episode one, you lucky, lucky people. Coming up on today's show, we have got Tom Breeze. We'll be talking to Tom in length about his Cage Warriors contract. We're just going to be looking back at last weekend where we went to Made for the Cage 10 and we'll giving that a bit of a nice little review. We've got much more coming up and we're going to be talking to Leroy Barnes about his Cage Warriors contract and much, much more. <laughs> Latest news. Up at the top, we've got John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson. They're confirmed that they want to fight each other, but it's all kind of verbal at the minute. Um, UFC are yet to announce what's actually going to happen. Um, Condit and Camperman, they're due to headline in August sometime on an unnamed UFC card. Tom Watson, um, he's got his fight lined up for BT Sport event on the 3rd of August, uh, UFC 163. Lightweight. Uh, Ex-UFC John Alessio, he's also going to go to Bellator with Rob Sinclair, Paul Sass, Martin Stilperton, but uh, Alessio is due to fight on Season 9 in the lightweight tournament. That's going to happen sometime this September. We've got Luke Newman and Leo Barnes, who are some of the next people who have signed for the Cage Warriors promotion. They're on a five-fight contract that should last over 18 months. And the main news, Conor McGregor and Diogo, that fight is set to clash on UFC's Boston card, Fox Sports 1. <laughs> So, Conor McGregor, and Andy Ogle, <laughs> UFC <laughs> Boston. You know, what the, you know, what did Andy Ogle do? I know. Because, you know, Conor McGregor, he's had the one UFC fight, but good God. You know what I mean? He fought a guy who was 3-0 and in the UFC and smashed him up in, what, a minute? Do you think it's that one-sided because McGregor's come in and made such an impressive debut and Ogle, I think he won his debut fight, but he didn't actually on the night. Yeah. There could be something to that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that say that what Ogle's really good at is taking people out of the game. It's really it's a durable fight, right? Yeah. But then, so is Marcus Brimage. Yeah, but... And arguably a more dangerous striker. Uh, you know, I, I do side with Conor McGregor on this, I think he'll probably take the win, but... Well, I'm sure he but, appreciates, I mean, Rob, sure he appreciates Rob, your support. Rob, Rob Sinclair was uh, he, he, he seems to think that Ogle's in for shot, doesn't he? So. He said he's a really durable. Yeah, he also. If I was a betting man, I'd put my money on, on McGregor. But you I, are betting man. I don't think I don't think you could ever ever count Ogle out. No. The, the guy the guy's tough, and I think by all accounts on his Facebook page, a lot of people already counted him out because yeah. he said he's not going to be on Facebook for a while until his training camp's over and done with. I'd imagine that's because there's a lot of people naysaying him. Um, I, and you know what, Andy Ogle's earned his spot on on the UFC as McGregor has as well. I don't think you can count him out, but theoretically, from the past fights, you've got to get McGregor. Yeah, you think that, and you got to give it to him in the first round by TKO. Kimba. What does Ogle have to do to win? He's got to grind him out. He's got to, down. got to push him against the cage, take him down, and, and ground him down a little bit. But I hate to say it, but I think his best best shot, and fans won't thank me for it, is probably Liam Bray. What about the Tom Watson fight? Tom and well, Tom Tom Watson's been. I don't know if you guys have been following Twitter, but he's been tw tweeting up a storm uh, since the announcement. He's been really quite funny. He uh, again, he's coming across. You're trying as, to say he's not funny normally. Well, I'm trying to say he's <laughs> coming across as funny. This we time. can do this now. We can yeah, actually get yeah. people into trouble. Yeah, yeah, fuckers. Yeah, you know, but you know, I asked him. I asked him. You know, how, wh when's this fight going to finish? First or second round? And Watson, <laughs> Watson's called first fight. TKO KO? Sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting his leg touched by Sean. No, nah, that's alright, you know, look at the two of them. It's, it's a damn good fight for Watson. Very good fight for Watson. Um, a it's, fight. It's first time fight for the UFC out of the UK. Yeah. So he's got a. And it's on the first BT event as well, so. Yeah. yeah. I've said it many times, I've not been a yeah, big fan. Yeah, to the BT thing. Well, it's not going to make any difference to me. I'm just free view so I'll get infinity and get free BT. That's easy. I could get messages from Sky saying you need to discuss your options because we're cancelling ESPN. Yeah, so they've just been done that. Eh? They've yeah, bought them out. So August if first and paying for ESPN, is that, that that's gonna stop. Yeah. You'd have to sort it out. Yeah. So you pay a fifteen pound one off fee 
Right. And then you pay twelve pound a month. For a BT Sports one or two. BT so it's an extra two quid. Plus a fifteen quid one I think. Mm, yeah. Admin fee or something, isn't it? Bend yeah. over. Fuck you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> but I you know, I think Watson, this is do you think this is a fight that he's you know, when we interviewed him at Bama he wanted like top ten. He hasn't had a top ten fighter yet. I was hoping maybe someone like Yushin Okami. You said, did you say that to him? Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Sh- I know, but same. I mean, what, what's what's in two fights in? Yeah, but well, I'm thinking that this time. But two fights in, yeah. One and one. One, one and one. one. Although an yeah, impressive, impressive second fight. Impressive, and fighter. you know, we picked up two bonuses with his last fight, so you know. But it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction, and that's the main thing. Is it though? I mean, I, I would say, when was the last time Lewis fought in the UFC? I think it's been a three or four year hiatus. It's just from, a different type of thing. Do you know what I mean? It's a different type of opponent. I mean, yeah, just, yeah, and he's, on. you know, he's going to be going into mm-hmm. hostile territory for the first time. But I, I just don't, I don't think. I mean, you watch Talis against Nate Marquardt, you know, Talis against, you know, Anderson Silver, and although I don't think Tom is quite Anderson Silver yet, I mean, Marquardt owned him on his feet. I think Tom's going to just batter him. What do you think about the John Jones Alexander Gustafsson fight? Do you think Gustafsson should even have the opportunity since. You know, I got to say. It depends whether he gets a little cut above his eye again. <laughs> well, that's only in Sweden. You can't blame him for that. Let's, let's not blame, you know, Gustafsson, because I think he'd probably have taken that fight. And I think he'd have fancied himself to beat Masazi. So, uh, you know, that's, that's Sweden's medical commission. That's got nothing to do with. However, that was supposed to be sort of a title eliminator, so. Mm. I gotta tell you, I'd rather see Gustafsson and, and, and Texera go at it. So we're talking about Cage Warriors and Bama and Bama kind of losing their way with their fighters. Um, Newman, Leroy Bonds are the next two people who have signed up. You know, they're stacking out the welterweight division, but they're also taken away from, from Bama, and is Bama to blame? You know, uh, I, I blame their TV deal. I mean, they obviously, they always wanted to be a TV product. I mean, that was always, I think. That's essentially who's behind them, is it? TV yeah, company? And, and that's but that's what Bama wanted as well, isn't it? And Bama wanted TV. And, you know, unfortunately, Channel 5, it seems to me, we're only interested in, you know, Alex Reed and, you know. Is that Sula. Go for it. Well, he, you know, he had a, he had a, he scraped by a guy that, quite frankly, he should have murdered, Jason, given the, uh, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> You've been tapped him out. We judged on a show ages ago. And we, we saw, saw, we saw oh, some. Uh, but yeah. so, you know, I, you know, are Bama a little bit to blame? You know, would you turn down the TV? You know, it got it got MMA on. But, terrestrial. I mean, we, we've worked on promotions. Mm. We, we've been to a lot of promotions. One thing that we've learned is that TV ain't always the best way. No, no, no definitely not. Okay. No, we, we 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 haven't got enough people interested in UK MMA. For, for its warrant TV at the moment. And Bama had a nice little stable of fighters. Mm-hmm. You know, you had C4, you had Andre Winnie, you had Colin Fletcher, you had Tom Brees, you had, you know, they had Bola, they had Luke Newman, they had Leroy Barnes, they had Jack Marshman. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Kurt Warburton, Stevie Ray. They had faces, they had people that they could market, they, they had things going on, they had divisions starting to get stuck in that kind of lightweight, now, middleweight, yeah. welterweight. And now you got a couple of their guys fighting on like Global Challenge in the States, you got the rest going off to Bellator and then Cage Warriors taking them to, I mean, fair well, play to Cage Warriors, man, that's good business. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. only are they getting, that's they're getting good fighters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 fair play to Cage Warriors, no one can blame them. And if they are, you know, is it we're out to destroy? No, they're just out to make their promotion better. Yeah, it is sure. a little bit like that, though, isn't it, as well, I think. Like, do you think, do you really think that they're all... Rest- uh, referring back to like, the old wrestling sort of WWF, yeah. WCW, when they, WCW was coming up, they just, they just took all out of the... the yeah, but my, the point... There's yeah, always been that argument of who's been the top one out of the two. Because you, you see MMA are kind of in their little bubble down in London. They whereas they Cage, Cage, Warriors, Cage Warriors and Bama tour the UK and Europe, yeah. Um, I, so you've always there's always been that argument of who's the top one. I well, think Cage Warriors can safely say now that they there's are. no doubt that they're the top one. And to use your wrestling analogy, wrestling was best when WCW and WWE were yeah. fighting tooth and nail for ratings. But you know, it's not very to me. I mean, it's it's a one-sided fight. Isn't it? Oh, it's it's absolutely. Yeah. And it just goes to show that consistency sometimes just beats star power, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. high level consistent with Cage Warriors. But, but, yeah. Again, you say star power, but okay, then you talk about, you know, you talk about Conor McGregor, you talk about Rio Pendridge, you talk about all of these guys. Well, they're not going yeah, to why, why are they stars now? 
Because of cage warriors. Because they've been fighting consistently for the last two, but, three years. But also they've been fighting the best in Europe and this is, you know, how many guys comparatively from Bama to cage warriors have made it to the biggest stage of all, which is the UFC and it's cage warriors every time. Plus, you know, a little bit kind of, you know, ass kissing here, Ian, D Ian Dean makes good matches. Yeah. That's not, I mean, let's not take, you know, they're not just, they're not out to destroy something, they're out to make sure their promotion becomes the biggest in Europe and fair play anyway. The last Bama was up in the northeast of England and we were there a couple of weeks ago for Made for the Cage. Yeah. So we're going to have a quick look at the highlights and then we're going to talk through the car. Anyway, we were at Made for the Cage 10 on the 25th of May. That was a long time ago. Yeah, a bit rude, wasn't it? Didn't you? Oh, well, I got to. You were talking rubbish. We're going to start talking about it. I forgot what happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I got notes on these cards. What was the um, standout fight for you then? Oh, I... James Muller. Yeah, that, I mean, that was a fantastic Two performance. Guy comes in, big heavyweight, and starts throwing punches like he's a middleweight. Yeah, his I, speed I'm happy was to eat humble made... pie, because I honestly thought Towler was going to yeah, last did, 90 didn't seconds. You? But 90 seconds of power and win. We, we, we so, had a yeah, James he was Mulherin. Like, oh, Tyler will smoke him in 90 seconds. So put the time on him. Mulherin's going to. I didn't think they were on the same level, but after watching that fight, Mulherin seems past that. You know who I was happiest for, though? If not James Mulherin. I was happiest for Kyle Redford. Yeah, he knocked the fuck out of Man! Him. That was a he, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he literally punched him off the floor. And yeah. David, yeah. David Rounds, Se we know he's, you know, he's a hand strong as well. Yeah, I mean, he, we know David Rounds is <laughs> very strong. He's very what strong. kind of strength is he? <laughs> well, he's strong like a gorilla, isn't he? Yeah. Well, uh, David Rounds certainly didn't like getting hit by him, that's for sure. And after he got, after Redfern was robbed by the judges at Bama, definitely, you know, it was good to see. He just came in and. You know, what well, about co-main event, Andrew Punch and Matt Ewan, I thought it had a bit yeah. of a funny finish. I, I gotta say, I, choke. Yeah, I've never seen a choke like it. I mean, had him in a guillotine one side for a while. I've seen, I, I almost thought, you know, I almost, I've almost seen you tap out to things like that. Yeah? Yeah. What, 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 talk, talk Basically, had him in a guillotine, I, arm in, I'm was not, it? Yeah, yeah, I'm not taking jiu-jitsu fucking lessons from you. Someone tell me hey. that. Something about jiu-jitsu. <laughs> 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 hey. Right, okay, I'm done. No, go go it was, it, yeah, it was. He, he got out of it, yeah. and then so they were kind of on the knees, and he got him in a headlock with the left arm, just one hand. Yeah. And then I didn't see a tap, but there, I think there was when you watched the video back, and then the referee kind of just went, uh, no. And then it didn't really, it just didn't really finish, That's but it, it finished. Punch him on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It just seemed, it just seemed odd, I guess. Unless you didn't you, complain. No, no. That he was. Yeah, he was done, but it just he was struggling after. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was. It, it did was look weird. like something I would tap to. It was good to see. It was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was something. Yeah, yeah. It, it was also good to see Truman. Yeah, you know, follow game plan. Yeah, guys, he had a couple of uh, losses, and I think after the Azim fight, I think if you'd have said Dean, do you want to quit MMA altogether, he'd have probably said yeah. I think he'd have stayed in and if you take knees out. And uh, hmm. yeah, and, and the guy come back and, and, and I made the mistake of saying he played safe. Yeah, which I, I didn't mean. It's amazing. I get held to task over making comments that I, you know, I think are innocent. Yeah, you can call fighters safe. You might as well have said he laid him right. He was very tactical. Yeah, he yeah. was smart. So it was a game plan. It was tentative. Tell he played a lot of chess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah you, you, you'd almost go as far as to say that he was probably a better chess player than a striker. <laughs> Dean, Dean fought good though. I mean, yeah. he, he threw he threw his opponent completely off. Good leg kicks in the first. Yeah, it just his movement, as you say, threw off anything. And I don't think I saw Strong really no. throw much. I don't think he allowed him to even start. I, I just think he kept him at bay all the time. Every time that Daz went to to, to start doing combos, Dean had stopped him by throwing leg kicks yeah, and, and kept jabs kept, to the face. Kept just. him at bay like a frightened mother when Clayton's around. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. I was impressed with it, the Polish zombie. Yeah, three Tim days Close. notice. Yeah, three days notice. Title eliminator. Mar Marcin. Marcin. Yeah, Marcin. So he's going to be fighting. He's going to be fighting Paul Cook, who, do, who 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 won his fight against yeah. Miller, I think, in the first round. And he's still on his fight. Yeah, um, made his pro debut. 
nice tight, you know, Camaro, two minutes in. Good first fight for Anissa. Yeah. Kept his distance, you know, it looked a bit Tentative like, to yeah, what's going to happen? But then as soon as they engaged, he just kind of powered onto the floor and pulled his arm off, basically. Chris Douglas, you know, gets rocked super hard in his middleweight fight. I mean, comes almost, to do almost the drop, and then comes, comes back, and then comes back. Like that. that made him popular. Yeah. Made us popular. Well, it's probably made him more popular. I mean, I, I suppose a lot more people know who Chris Douglas is now. It, but you know, it's when a good guy with the uh, Kung Fu fighting. I don't know. That's Chris Douglas, isn't it? What about our new friend Dave Graham? We gave care of the night. Yeah, oh, he looked. He looked. Yeah, I mean, he was pumped all the way through. He was the army guy, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 He was. He made me laugh. He was good. He was good interview him as well. Yeah, it was a good interview, and you know those SBG guys, you know they're getting themselves around all over the place now. They had a great night at Cage Warriors last night. They had a great night at, you know, at a uh, Made for the Cage. Mm. You know, the, this is a team on the up, and then with their Irish counterparts as well, doing so well. You know, is SBG, you know, the fastest rising sort of team in the UK mm. at the moment. Anybody stand out on the amateurs for you? Oh, I was impressed yeah, by like Joe Savage. Uh, Joe Savage, just because he's a 16 year old with some good wrestling. Joe yeah. oh, and his wrestling was savage, man. I mean, he was a takedown machine. Really good. You know, I'd have let, you know, I don't think it's anywhere near close to the same weight class, but, you know, DKZ and Savage just did a grappling comp would be worth mm. watching, wouldn't it? I mean, because DKZ was like the super He's still injured, isn't it, Mark DKZ? Yeah, he's suffering. Yeah. A shame. Which he, is unfortunate because he was. Uh, he was Ben Places. He was not. Yeah. So, uh, all in all, then, another good show. I I, I'd, I'd say one of the best. I, I think the, the, the best one we've been to. The, the one with Craig Turner that was headline a good it. Yeah. That was. First for me, but this was definitely a close second. Is that, as far as is that first started. for you though? Because you know, because you Craig Turner, yeah, yeah, yeah. Def- yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that, man. Just, just go and watch Craig Turner win that title. With, against Redford as well, it's a tough yeah. fight. I, I think this was an all round better card. Uh, I think the Craig Turner fight will still stand out as one of the best fights I've seen it made for the cage, but I think this card with only been the I mean, it's yeah. 10 of them, we've seen three. But of those three, this Ma- this Mike one was about to get started, some good finishes, variety all the way up the card, yeah. and then, you know, you had your three, you know, three to five minute rounds with uh, Strawn and Truman, and same with Mo Heron and Talbot. Yeah, Mo Heron's going places, man. I mean, the, uh, 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 and guys. the good thing is because the UFC's got such a short roster of, of heavyweights, a couple more wins. I mean, yeah. it's beat. Uh, Taylor, he's beat Taylor. Yep. Is he two, three now? He's three, three now. Oh, he's he's, he's, right. he's beaten guys that have had like 12, 15 more fights than him and done I mean, it convincingly. Two, two, two more wins on his record. You could probably see him debuting on the UFC. Well, I'm just wondering how long before he signs for Cage Wars. We've got a little bit of an interview with James, so you know I'll show you a bit of a clip now, and then the rest you can go to the front row of my YouTube channel and see the rest of that interview with James. You, you rocked him a couple of times, but you always stayed patient. You were yeah. always it, again. Did did you, was there at, at any point you thought I should have gone in to finish this, or are you happy with the uh, patience? Happy with you, you see, even at, towards the end there, he's sort of flurrying and flurrying. And I knew he was a, every time he was rocked. Even if I come forward and I tried to throw like a couple of them overhand right, he was still firing back. It, 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 it was quite impressive, but I stayed like patient. Just uh, I knew there was plenty of time. I was going to win by decision. And I knew it was going to be there. UFC 160, Velasquez first Bigfoot. A really good main card, perhaps an underwhelming undercard. You had Cain Velasquez stopping Bigfoot again. I mean, let's be fair, Bigfoot made some progress. He lasted, lasted 17 seconds longer. You had JDS versus Mark Hunt. I think the, a fight that more fans were looking forward to than perhaps the Velasquez and, and Bigfoot fight. And, you know, the spinning wheel kick to, to finish was a thing of beauty. Glover Texera shows that he's more than just hype with another quick win over James Tahuna. And probably one of the more exciting fights of the night, as long as it lasted, was Gray Maynard and TJ Grant. I think Maynard probably came in thinking he was going to own this, and TJ Grant finishes him with strikes about halfway through the first round. You know, if I'm going to grade this, this, this event out of 100, I'm going to give it 75. The main card paid off. Those five fights were awesome. The two split decisions and a fairly underwhelming overcard probably hurt a little bit. But 75 out of 100, and you can't forget Donald Cerrone's demolition of KJ Noons. Absolutely awesome to watch. Okay, looking up at the next UFC, UFC on Fuel TV 10. Nagrea versus Vadum on 8th of June. 
what do we think about this car? Is it the most exciting or is it too bazillion? It's, it, it's always going to be a problem, isn't it, when they do these fuel cards, especially when they do them outside of, you know, Brazil or Sweden or wherever it is they What you've got to imagine is that there's four Brazilians doing a TV show that's <laughs> going to be talking about the next UK show. That's it. Um, um, uh, the, yeah. I mean, and that's what we're like with this. But, there's, but you've got Vaughn Lee fighting you, on it. Yeah, so. you know, Vaughn taking, I mean, probably the toughest opponent he's ever faced, I would imagine. Before we talk, yeah, yeah, on paper. Yeah. Before uh, we talk about any more, yeah, Vaughn Lee versus Rock Anderson Chow, we caught up with him the other day. Here's a little bit of what he had to say. Phil's going to come to fight, do you know what I mean? He's going to come try to take me out and take my head off. So that's, that's what I like, do you know what I mean? I like to be put in danger. Do you know what I mean? And that's how I respond. So definitely, yeah, uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna, I'll be able to showcase my skills a lot more in this fight. Yeah. Vaughn is. I said it in the interview. He's he's one of the most laid back guys you'll ever ever meet. I mean, it, it's. He's happy with this fight because he, he actually wants someone who wants to come out and fight with him. He, like. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get a fight. He's not gonna have to worry about somebody trying to just single leg him into the cage and lie on top of him. They, they, Vaughn's gonna get to hopefully show what we've what we've seen. Yeah, we, we spoke about his corner. We spoke to his corner at uh, Wembley. Yeah, and they were saying he don't like this fight. Or he, he doesn't like this fight simply yeah. because he's gonna have to fight differently to how we how we yeah. like to fight. Yeah. This fight in Brazil, this is how we like to fight. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna, gonna be all that war. Someone's yeah. gonna get finished. Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, it's going to be in the distance. Or if it's three rounds, it's going to be. You mean there's a couple of fights on here that could be fight of the night, and I would suggest that that's probably one of them. That's certainly one of the contenders on there. Like a strange thing for fighters, like I'm assuming the UFC guys would rather fight guys that's going to be exciting fight and chances with bonus money. Mm rather than someone that they probably think they can beat in a boring fight. And you know, you've got Eric Silver there against Jason High. And coming back after a loss to John Fitch, and then if, you know, as he I think he went and trained with Fitch after that. I, I, he might have even had another fight since then, and shows what I know. But, you know, Eric Silver, very exciting fighter, finishes everything in the first, it seems, so. Your expectation is a little bit lower because you're not too sure about it. And then they, uh, they always, they will all, they will, I guarantee there'll be three fights that we want to talk about. At least three fights that we're going, that's fucking amazing. Okay, still to come up on the show, after this little break, we're going to have Tom Breeze on the sofa with Steve. We're going to be talking to Leroy Bonds about his Cage Warriors deal and the first tap out challenge with me and Dean Truman. I am um, lots of fun for that. We're here with Tom Breeze. Tom, I've got a lot of things that I want to talk to you about today, but I think first we'll kind of go back in time a little bit and we'll talk about TriStar. Yeah. Um, how did that opportunity present itself? And um, Basically, I just went out there, like, didn't have a fight coming up, so I went out there to improve and uh, uh, originally supposed to go out for three weeks. Yeah. And uh, just for my own training. When I got out there, um, like, GSP was training for the Nick Diaz fight inspired GSB and he asked me to stay for his camp, which was a great opportunity. And so just from just from a sparring session? Yeah, because I'm a safe core, Nick Dad's a safe core, I'm tall as well. And just from the first sparring session, yeah, he said he wanted me to stay well, for the camp. You know, I, I get fanboy just sitting around chatting with, with fighters for, for someone like GSP to say, hey, I want you on board. Yeah. What, what, went, what went through your head? Were you like a kid at Christmas or were you yeah. very... It was, a, it was a big confidence boost though, you know, so yeah. Um, like, it was a great honour as well, so yeah. Uh, obviously, you, you're training out at TriStar and there's lots of names out there, you know, lots of top fighters, but w what are the fundamental differences between training somewhere like there and training in the UK? Are there any, or is it just the people? There's more high quality people. Um, I think they're a lot more technical, and uh, yeah, I just feel like they understand the game, game a bit more you know, over here. And there's a lot more, a lot more bodies in the gym. It's one of the best gyms in the world as well, so yeah, yeah I can't really say for the like Canada as a whole against England, but yeah. that gym, yeah, is special. And they put you up in the tri-store dorms. Yeah, I was in I was in the dorms for um for the first week, and then yeah, uh, yeah, I was in the dorm. What you know? What's life like in in one of those places? Um, so you've got to be with a bunch of guys. When, when I first walked in there, like the first day I got there, I was like, I walked in and I was um like it was a bit the place was a mess and it was just full of full of fighters. I was like, what the fuck, man. <laughs> And uh, like after the first few nights, started start to get to know the guys, and yeah, they're all great guys. You become good friends with a lot of them, training partners, and yeah, they're all killers as well. A lot of them. So we're gonna move on a little bit. You know, you've got a Cage Warriors contract signed, but I want to talk Bama for first. Yeah. Um, first off, you know, you're you're basically you've yeah, I assume you've given up the Lonsdale yeah. British Welterweight title. Um, what's 
what's the, your best band the moment? What's the what what event or what fight that you've taken part in, or even that you? What's the best about Bama? Um, that's the best thing about Bama really, like the show was the show was great. Just you know, stepping out into the uh, arenas, I always had a lot of support. I'd always have like I'd I'd sell about two hundred and fifty tickets, and uh, yeah, um, stepping out into the arena, it was it was a big show. You you like it was a big occasion, and yeah, and just just performing and uh, yeah, I had some great moments. Um, I think when I fought Jack McGee, that was that was the highlight for me really. Yeah. I made uh, made some mistakes and managed to get myself out of trouble and submit him. And it's 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 six and you six and zero with Bama. You signed with Cage Warriors, as has just about everybody. <laughs> you yeah. know, everybody yeah, of, know, of yeah. name. You yeah. know, anybody who's been who's been very good. Do you is is this is this the end of Bama? How, how much would you be gutted if Bama sort of disappeared now? Yeah, I'd hate to see I'd hate to see him disappear, but. I just I just wish that I would have stayed with him if they had had more shows. So this is this this was just about you. The move just, was about consistency. It's about consistency. I need to fight. So if if I can't fight, then I, I have to go somewhere else. So. What is it about Cage Warriors that excites you though? Now is it just the fact you're going to get fights, or is there you know they're quite a professional prom promotion? Not that Bama isn't, but that's what, that's one thing. I think that's one thing that I've always liked about Cage Warriors as well is the fact that um, there's none of this. Alex Reed crap and stuff like that, and you know what I mean. And then, I mean, I don't really, I don't really like to say stuff about this, but you know, like the boss, you know, the Bama Twitter page. Yeah. It, it talks a lot of rubbish. You know what I mean? It's, it's talking about Star Wars the other week. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, Cage is very professional, and uh, yeah, and they've got like high European. Yeah. Talent on there. There was a Cage Warriors event yesterday, and yeah, obviously the uh, main event. Yep. Must have interested yeah, you definitely. somewhat. Uh, you know, what did you take from from watching that? Is you know, Mills and, and Pendrin, and there are other welterweights kicking around there. Where do you where do you see yourself sort of slotting in? Whoever whoever they give me really, but as I say, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in this sport if I didn't think I could be the best. And I've, I know I can be the best, so that's but, what it matters. You know, Cage Warriors as well seems to be a very big, a very good stepping stone, certainly in Europe for the yeah. UFC. Is, yeah, that some, is that something else that sort of played yeah. on your mind as you yeah. made that call? If, if you're if you're winning a, winning fights on Cage Warriors against the guys that they've got and they've got great talent on there, then there's nowhere else to go but the UFC after that. Is there every chance that we will see you competing in the UFC before the end of 2014? Yeah, oh, that's my plan. Especially when I keep for keep uh, keep winning, then yeah. And Cage Wars, it's a five fight, yeah, five fight contract, five fight. and eighteen month or yeah. So, so you, you yeah. plan on staying busy. That's what I mean. If I when I win those five fights, UFC at the end of it, be eleven and up. Ta, it, it's it's always always a pleasure to, to chat with you. Thanks very much for traveling all the way down no, no for, to, to see us. But before we let you go, is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, um, my main sponsor Sandy, uh, Multipower, my nutrition sponsor. And uh, my, my teammates at Fearless MMA, and yeah, that's it really. Try Star Gym. Yeah. Wonderful. Tom, thanks so much for your Thank time. You. It's always a pleasure. Okay, so um, obviously we've just interviewed Tom. Real nice guy. Oh, we're on that bit. We're on that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just standing near Catalaga. <laughs> Real nice guy. We had a bit of a chat with him after as well, didn't we? Kind of off camera. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we managed to get him just before uh, MMA Plus tried to rob us. <laughs> yeah, didn't they? Uh, after, yeah. after, yeah. after they, they found out dickheads. that we were going to be interviewing him today. That's why I say you can't announce a guest until the day before because of them. We'll yeah. fucking... We'll, we'll see you on Friday, Tom! Before we watch the um, tap-out challenge I did with Dean, how do you think I got on today with... Um, shit. With Tom. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I thought, you know, I think arguably the toughest opponent Tom's ever had to face. Do I think I'm refining my skill a I think you bit? Yeah, I think your tapping is becoming a thing of art. Yeah, it's yeah. A, well, I'm, I'm, like, I'm searching for <laughs> the part of the body that I can tap on. It's I get worried when I think, God, is he going to feel my tap? It's the first time I've actually seen your jiu-jitsu. <laughs> in, in, in that real life. Did he do I any jujitsu? Hey, well, I, I, I hope to God you never have to go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no fucking way of defending yourself whatsoever. <laughs> My little girl would last long on that. <laughs> <laughs> With that note, here's the first woman Dean Truman. That does not give you permission to do jujitsu in my little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
<laughs> You're all fucking joking me. Why am I doing this? Off me. Might be off my over. 11.34. It's me, don't worry about it. 11.34? What, all together? No, no. Both, right, yeah. Right. <sighs> <laughs> Fucking dumb <laughs> god, bro. <laughs> Well done, Jay, 19.7 there. It was me bleeding. Done that for a total of one minute and 19 seconds. I'm gonna add that up now. Oh, that, that was just brilliant. How was it? <laughs> for a try, for a try. <laughs> Absolutely. I gotta tell you, I'm almost chap. <laughs> Oh, I'm not. I just love watching you get your ass kicked. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, across the country last night there was uh, many shows. There was OMEX 17, UCI May 34, um, Pain Pit 2. We'll have an event report on our website. That's www.frontrowmma.com um, for Pain Pit. Um, and there's also Cage Warriors 55. So we're just going to have a look at some of the results from Cage Warriors 55. You know, the, the top fight was Capo Pendred, uh, who defeated Chain Mills in the third round. Yeah. I and deserved it. Deserved the win. Shamos came in, um, didn't make the weight. You, no, you didn't. Ha you weren't happy about that. Uh, the, the guy, the guy's an experienced fighter. He's been in the UFC, um, and to come to Cage well, it, it to me, I, it's almost like he's given up mentally. I'd, I'd, I'd like to think I'm wrong. I'd like to think that he ain't gonna punch me in the face next time he sees me for saying it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the cameras rolling. But but the the fact is that the guy's been around the block a couple of times. He should know how to make weight. Yeah, I, I know. I, I'm 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 with you a little bit on that, and I think I'm more comfortable saying that. I think I, I think <laughs> I'm more comfortable saying that though after listening, you know, our first ep you know, the first series of Grumpy Old MMA, mm. and when you hear. People who have actually competed. I mean, it's easy yes, for me to say. Amazing. It's easy for me to say you should make weight. I know what you're saying. But when you've got guys in shape, who's not been in shape though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I am in shape. Round. That, that's my shape. It's fucking it, loud and all. When you see, when you hear, <laughs> when you hear guys like you know, when you when you hear guys who've been in the cage. <laughs> Such jokers. <laughs> oh, you are so funny. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Come Get on. on you, you hear guys who have been involved in the sport for a while and they're saying, your job is to make weight. You you don't make weight. I got no time for you. And, you know, Mills, it was a title fight. And it was a title fight he walked into based on it's the fact, you know, past. his name and his past. And, you know, if he'd won that fight, if he'd won that fight, would we? Did, would he then deserve the immediate rematch for the title because he couldn't make weight the first time? He didn't well, I mean, it, didn't he? <clears throat> I know that um, they say that it's a lot harder to get back into the UFC once you've been thrown out than what people say. But um, he's he's nowhere near returning to the UFC after that performance. Now is it? I'll, I'll make sure that you get that interview at the end of the next one. It's a good score. Well, no, I, the, I'm not lying, am I? No, I think no. I, no yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, would he have deserved? Had he made weight? Had he beaten convincingly? Would the UFC have took notice and said two more fights? We'll see about having perhaps him. now. Not a fucking chance. It's a good scope for Pentry to have. Do you think that's setting him a little bit closer to following his teammate Conor McGregor? You, you would think. Uh, you yeah, would you'd, you'd want to join that team pretty quick, wouldn't you? Yeah. If you're a fighter. The, yeah, the, I mean, yeah, as, yeah, move over to Ireland and join that team. FPG, FPG are doing stuff. doing well all over the place, and you know, Pendred seemed, you know, he did some interviews after Cage Warriors, and he still seems pretty confident that he'll be following Connor. First of all, a little feature wants to watch. Um, back in April the twentieth, we were at Fight UK nine, and we picked out two fighters which we thought were particularly good on that night. We've got James Muda and Tyo Adundro. Let's talk Tyo Adundro first. What do we think of Tyo? Who? 
Tyler Cruz. Tyler Cruz. So he like he's a big star. Tyler Cruz on the back. No. Yeah, yeah young guy, yeah. Yeah, 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 very, yeah. very raw. Trained down in London shoot fighters originally for a couple of months, and you could tell. I know, yeah. I know he's joined the rough house, but you could still, still tell that that guy had uh, been watching Michael Venom Page quite a lot. Um, pretty down. much fought with his hands down and paid for it. Got caught quite a few times, but yeah, he won. It was a nice win, and he weren't happy about it. This is, this is what we were talking yeah. him down, but he, he, there was something there. there that his saw. movement was was impressive, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, and, and I think. You know, Fight UK is you know it's, a, it's it was a debut. It's a big it's a big show. Yeah, for yeah. for a debut, and I think the adrenaline. Yeah, there was obviously had an adrenaline dump between the first and the second. Samuda was, I mean, he was he he was really athletic. Um, his wrestling was. Is it just because we weren't expecting that against Max Cotton, or was it no? There was no. Him? You just you, again. You, you could. I mean, to show the fights up somewhere. You got to. I mean, no. This this kid was. He was strong. He was athletic. His his takedown and talk control was immense. And as Breeze pointed out in his interview a little earlier, if he just postured up a little bit more, I mean, he would he he bust Cotton up good and proper, didn't he? And if he I, I don't think up a I don't think more, he was that big. And and then like when he walked into the weigh-ins, he was so much taller than Max Cotton. I was like, fuck, Max, you 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 you're, you're, you're in trouble there. We saw him at Amma, and we we knew he was tall, but yeah, the comparison was bigger uh, than you thought. But his his talk talk control was something other than else. Next for us is we talked to Leroy Bonds, who is obviously now signed with Cage Warriors. Um, good interview. Good interview. Should have been in a bath, but didn't happen in a bath. No, Here it no. is. Right. So to start, we um, we saw it made for the Cage Ten. Yeah. Um, what did you think to the event? It was good. It's really good event. I think it's the best one they've done, to be honest. Every, every single fight was a good fight. There wasn't one bad fight, apart from one. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't bad because I, I got to see Chris Douglas get fucking dropped by a light. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what what is it about Chris Douglas? In that interview, he said that um, you you uh, not disrespected him so much, but you you'd um, said quite a lot of bad things about him in the past. I didn't say I didn't say anything to be honest. I can't even remember what it started from. What what it was is like I think I had an opponent pull out on Bama once, and uh, we were desperate for somebody, and somebody said that he wanted the fight. So I was like, right. So I went on Twitter. I said, if you want the fight, let's have the fight. And he took fucking big offence to it. So whatever it sort of went on. I asked Bama for the fight. Bama wouldn't put the fight on because he said his record wasn't big enough. He said it wasn't a fair match. And then he's he's gone on about it ever since. Like I see. I, I get his ambition. He wants to be on the big shows and all that and blah, blah, blah. But, mate, it's, he's just fucking stupid. If he fights me, he'll get hurt, especially going off that performance last week. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll move away from Douglas. You know, when we spoke to you last at, at Made for the Cage, we were probably a couple of days early in terms of you being able to announce who you'd signed with. Are you gutted that you've, you've had to sort of leave Bama behind or, or is this the next step in the progression of your career? Um, both really, like it is the next step, but I am gutted about leaving Bama. Bama were, were really good to me, like all the staff, <coughs> Jude Samuels, the matchmaker's great, Izzy's great, he does the PR, you know, ev everybody was really good to me, you know, I, I got all right pay out of them and, you know, they looked after me, they got me good matchups and it was good, it was good to be there, you know, like I think they sort of raised my profile like more than it was anyway, like I was doing all right, but they raised it a lot and they got me good fights, and to be honest, I wouldn't be like in the top twenty rankings now if I hadn't had them fights on that show. So, and you know, I am going to leave them, but there just wasn't enough shows on. You know, I need to get paid, and I need to be active, and you know, I, I had a, I fucked up in my career really on taking wrong advice, cutting too much weight, and messed a lot of fights up. So, I've got a, you know, I've got some catching up to do in terms of getting my record right. So. I need to be with a good show that's going to get in good fights regularly. And Cage Warriors came in and he made a really good offer. And, you know, Graham believes in me and Ian Dean believes in me. And, you know, my management thought it was the right thing to do. So, Now, obviously, Cage Warriors have gone on a massive signing rampage. Um, and quite a lot of the signings have done are oh, with Bam Bama fighters. Yeah. So do you see Bama being dead in the water now? Do you, I mean, how can they come back from, from losing all of the, the title holders? Or most of the title holders and all of the guys that pulled in big tickets, like self. Well, it's what it is. I think that they're going to go down the 
stay in big arenas, but keep the, the style of the smaller shows. Like, if you noticed on, on the Newcastle show, the undercard was pretty much all local guys that are going to sell a lot of tickets. There wasn't that many big UK names on the card. There was a couple at the at the top of the card, but there was a lot of local guys. I think they'll, they'll go down the ticket sales room and try and do that and just bring in one big guy in, in the uh, in the like, main event or something. I, I don't really know because this is what I was thinking. I was worried as well, thinking, who am I going to fight? Everyone's going to Cage Warriors. So, you know, it's, it's one of them things. I, I, don't, I don't know what Bob are going to do, but I, I wish them the best. So Cage Warriors as well, they, they, they bring in some of the best from across Europe as well. Is it going to be a matter of, are you going to have to change up how you research opponents now, bearing in mind that they're going to be pulling guys from all over the place? Yeah, you know, to be honest, since since I've since my career has taken a bit of a like turn for the better, I've not really researched many people. To be honest, like I researched Sutherland, and I wish I hadn't because I was thinking he's going to do this, he's going to do that, he's going to do this, blah blah blah. And in the fight, I was getting log jammed. Like I was too heavy for that fight as it was. And when I got, I didn't realize I felt fine in the gym. When I got into the fight, I was like, oh shit, I don't feel myself. I feel sluggish. And then I started to panic and I'm getting log jam thinking he's going to do this, he's going to do that. And to be honest, I'll take a quick look at the guys who they are. I'll send the video to my coaches and I'll, I'll let them worry about it because I'm just going to do what I do and, you know, just worry about me. So Has an opponent been named yet or has anything been mooted around? No, nobody's been named. My, my management said wait, wait until next week, so... I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're looking at somebody on on the card this weekend if if they come through that. Because I've been told to wait till next week. Maybe they're just busy with this card. I, I don't know, but we'll see. Who, whoever they give me, you know, whatever. Well, you, you're not a shy person. There, there must be someone in their on their roster that you quite like the look of to to take on. To be honest, I've. I had a look through the roster on the website the other day and I, I didn't really see anybody, you know. I don't want to go jumping into Cage Warriors and calling people out and this, that and the other, but just just whoever, you know. Ian Dean's a great matchmaker. Whoever he, he thinks I'm going to I'm gonna put on a good show with, then we'll look at it and we'll take it from there. But it's, it's one of them things, like, I, I don't want him to, like, throw me in straight away with the likes of fucking John Phillips and Chris Fields and stuff like that, but it's... You know, I, I want to take the fights that are going to progress me to, to fighting those guys. I just want to fight the, the best guys and test myself against them. Because if I want to go far in the sport, I'm going to have to fight the good guys anyway. So, yeah. And when are you open to fight? I know that you keep pointing out um, Liverpool. Yeah, they've told me I'm on the Liverpool you card. Yeah, but yeah, my camp starts this weekend. So, got something being in his bonnet about Chris Douglas, hasn't it? <laughs> I think he's getting a little bit pissed off people talking about it, but to be fair, he does tweet every day that the guy's a prick, so he ain't open himself. But yeah, um, the typical tweets are you, you know, you shit, <laughs> my mother, shit, my, I'd, you know, fight, you got out. I'd yeah. fight you and four of your mates in your mother's backyard while wearing her apron or something. Yeah, pretty yeah. sure. That's kind of painfully, really, mm -hmm. isn't it? But yeah. Um, but he also explained why he thought Douglas was doing it. You know, he said, fair play to the lad for he obviously yeah. wants to move up. He wants to, and let's face it, one of Leroy's, one of the things that makes Leroy so remarkable is, you know, his social media presence and, and his interviews. And, yeah. And so somebody, well, you can't help but think that that's a lot of the reason why Cage Warriors are probably signing him up. You know, the, the, the guy markets himself and the promotion that he's fighting on yeah. very well. Anyway, on that note, we're going to be back in three weeks on June the 26th. We'll be here with Darren Sherlock and Paul Crossley of the UK MMA Expo. We'll be giving you the news and updates on international UK MMA news. And we've got other features coming up, another tap out challenge with Asim. And that's about it really. So we'll be announcing more. Check us online at Twitter at FRMMAUK or on Facebook Front Row MMA. Or go to the website www.frontrowmma.com. MMA Plus suck. Yeah, look for the interview with MMA Plus with uh, the UK MMA Expo guys at next week's so. <laughs> sake. Now, now, now that we've announced it. <laughs> we'll be able to say, That's it. Ah! it. Ladies.